we need to move on to the next site. Um, and that is land south of Coldham's Lane. And we have Chris Cushone and Tim Chilvers presenting. Over to you, Chris. Fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Daunton. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, yes, my name is Chris Crisioni. I'm the Communications Officer at Anderson Group, uh, and I'm joined this evening by my colleague, uh, Tim Chilvers, who heads up Land and Planning. Uh, and so it's great to, to be here at the Cambridge East Community Forum again, uh, this time to be on the, on the presenter's side um, to talk about Land South of Coldham's Lane. Um, it's a site with a, a, a a complex history um, and much of that history Anderson has been a, a, a part of um, working with the city councillors, uh, with residents uh, and of course with uh, with neighbouring businesses um, and, 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 uh, and, and neighbours in other regards. Um, and so I'd just like to run through um, an introduction to the site. Uh, many of you will know it. Um, Tim will then go through our vision uh, and proposals um, which are sort of imminent for, for submission to the local planning authority. Can I just say before you, just before you start, please do bear in mind the time and keep to your time because we do want to get through as many questions as possible. So, so do keep to your time. Thank you. Absolutely. We, we most uh, certainly will. Um, and so uh, if I can talk a little bit about the local plan. So in the 2018 Cambridge City local plan, the site is allocated um, in policy 16 uh, for a number of uses across the uh, what's considered an area of major change. Um, in development terms, the most significant parcel is uh, parcel A here. Um, I don't know if you can see my cursor, um, but the A is quite obvious in any case. Um, that is for appropriate commercial uses uh, as set out in that local plan policy. Um, area B for uh, elements of outdoor recreation and ecological mitigation. And then within our control, um, we have what's known as area C, or as many people will know, uh, the lakes. And so that's that's down here. It's just the two lakes with obviously the uh, the TA lake above that that's out of our control. And so uh, plans are for wider generation. Uh, I'll move on to the next slide. And so it's no secret um, that we've been at this for a while. Um, and it's been a, a thoroughly detailed process, um, many iterations many iterations of um, proposals uh, from mixed use uh, to what we see here on site or, or here in the proposals now. Um, the, the good thing that's come out of that slightly sort of protracted process is the sheer uh, volume of engagement that we've had with local residents. And so now we feel um, that this scheme is in a place that, that reflects um, their, their wants and desires out of such an, an asset really on, on the lakes um, for the most part, um, but also what they want to see um, on, on area A and, and B. Um, and so th that is, uh, you know, a, a, a sort of run through of where we have been. Um, we've had three public consultations uh, over, over the years that I've most certainly been part of. Um, and, and every time we've had a great deal of uh, interaction with local residents. Uh, and so that has led to what we currently see. Sorry, I'm not sure what the noise is now, but uh, handily, I'll pass on to Tim to run over the vision for uh, the land south of Coldham's Lane. Great, thanks, Chris. Yeah, if you want to pop down the slide um, to the next one, that'd be great. Thank you. And uh, yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, as Chris has said, uh, the, the context behind this, uh, these sort of three parcels of which we own, um, is the local plan, the 2018 local plan. So it's up to date and it sets a very clear framework for what the council's expectations are uh, in terms of the development and type of uses that need to come forward and the interaction between these parcels as well, because uh, it's an area that is quite naturally severed uh, with the rail line and, and various uses. So um, there's really an emphasis on making uh, this as linked as it can be. So uh, parcel A there, you can see we can run through uh, the other slides, but parcel A um, is now coming forward. We're pu putting it forward for a, uh, a commercial use. Um, historically, we had um, proffered and looked to come forward with more of a mixed use offering, um, but, but really the, um, the desire was to see a, a, you know, a commercial only scheme and that's what we are, uh, are looking to do. Um, parcel B then uh, will be used wholly for ecological ecology mitigation, bearing in mind the various designations of the land in the area and the, the fact that we need to offset uh, biodiversity requirements. And then the lakes, um, 
you know, clearly there's there's a long history of the lakes and problems associated uh, with what could be a really, really good asset for the local community. We're as keen as anyone to get this sorted for the long term uh, and to make these a real uh, usable place that residents can enjoy. Um, and, and so the scheme uh, would undertake you know, quite a significant program of improvements to the lakes and make them safe uh, and accessible. And we, we will open those up so that members of the public um, can make use of them, uh, as I say, in a safe way. So if we just run through the next slide, Chris, that will give people a slightly more zoomed in um, uh, prospect of what we're looking at. So parcel A, which is that uh, L-shaped area, which obviously has the tins running through the middle. Uh, there'll be a commercial uses on, on both elements of the land there with a, a grade separated um, crossing so that there's no conflict between pedestrians and cyclists and any kind of vehicular movements. And um, this, this area we would be applying for an outline. So what you see there is purely illustrative as a, uh, to give a flavor of what could come forward. Um, but really, you know, the details are some, something that would come forward as, as part of reserve matters. Um, go on to the next slide, please, Chris. Parcel B, as I said earlier, we're really looking to do a light touch proposal here um, of, of bio, um, biodiversity mitigation. So really not a huge amount of change to what's currently in situ on the site, but there will be enhancements to habitats, uh, pr predominantly for invertebrate species. And then uh, the most exciting element of the scheme from our perspective, and, and no doubt from the communities as well, uh, is, is the lakes. And so uh, this would be a, a part of the site we apply for in detail um, so that the, there's no kind of time lag or delay between um, uh, you know, what we're putting forward, hopefully uh, obtaining a permission that's implementable. Uh, and then we can bring forward the works that are required to, to bring the lakes forward. And, and really for these lakes, we are, um, we're not looking to over-engineer anything at this stage, and we don't want to kind of preempt what the community might want to bring forward, um, you know, in the years ahead here, uh, because the way we see it is this, this is a local uh, asset for um, informal recreation and use only. We don't want it to be, and, and nor do I think the community really want it to be a major draw or, or kind of traffic generator uh, or anything like that, because there are other, um, country parks in the vicinity of this site which uh, fulfill that role and don't have the physical constraints that this particular parcel of land does. And uh, th there you can see, for example, just a, uh, a zoom in of, of some of the plans that are emerging just to show that these are detailed plans. Um, uh, as I said earlier, not over engineered, so very much timber, uh, natural materials, um, nothing intrusive or urban and look and feel. And uh, just just two images which show what the what the, the current condition of the lakes uh, are in, and, and really we just got to build on what's there because um, they, they really are incredible on site. And at the moment, aside from uh, the angling club and, and certain permits for bird watching and the like, it's closed off to people, uh, and that, that's that's a sad state of affairs. Uh, it makes it right for trespass, and um, uh, you know the sooner we can resolve this, I think the better, really. So next steps very quickly are we've, we've put in for an EIA scoping opinion, just to make sure that the technical evidence base upon which we're basing our plans is, is robust and, um, and satisfactory. Um, um, so could you explain EIA, please? Of course I can. Uh, environmental impact assessment. Um, so it's a procedure uh, you go through for major applications where there's um, you know, more severe potential environmental impacts uh, than a, uh, a normal application of a normal scale. Um, so you just have to go into more uh, detail in assessing you know, traffic, air quality, noise, uh, those kind of considerations. Uh, the planning application itself, we've been, we've been working closely with the, with the City Council and the Highways Authority also uh, through pre-app and we, we'll be looking to submit the application um, uh, next month and obviously that builds on many, many years of consultation and engagement with the public to shape where we've got to, uh, and that, that public engagement will obviously continue and it will continue through um, throughout the course of the determination and there'll be engagement in relation to the lakes, which obviously we've got to manage and we're very sensitive to uh, in the months ahead and as the, and as the weather warms up. But that last bullet point there, I, I think is absolutely crucial from, from our perspective is, um, you know, in, in, in 
in bringing forward a for that local plan commercial development um, what that will enable us to do is the early and upfront delivery and improvements of the lakes uh, and that, that that is key i think there, there was uh councillor daunton a question submitted in advance that related to trespass on the lakes and, and tim's touched on that um and i think in early and upfront delivery of, of that parcel um really the, the focus is on um sort of uh, early prevention clearly uh you know summer is uh upon us thick and fast um and so we will take the necessary steps to manage that and i can go into detail um and in the question time um but in effect the way we see the solution to the the trespass to the antisocial behavior and so on is through opening up lakes and so that's our sort of central mission and aim at this point in time the last uh, slide is just to say, uh, you know, we'd be happy to take questions. Um, if you do want more detailed uh, uh, sort of descriptions on the proposals, please do visit our website um, because that will effectively go through what we've just presented, but also um, uh, uh, you know, some more information on top of that. Um, and our contact details are also on there as well. So we're more than happy to, to take questions uh, via email. Um, thank you, um, Tim, and thank you, Chris. Um, and just before we go to the questions um, in the chat, there was another question sent in in advance. Um, would Andersons please stop referring to the lakes as Burnside Lakes? A possible name might be, for example, Cherry Hinton Lake. So that's uh, something for you too. Yeah, I mean, so uh, we, we've uh, we've been having this this conversation for years, and, and our central sort of focus um, when we sort of labelled it Burnside Lakes way back when um, was to make sure that people weren't calling it the Romsey Beach because that was attracting uh, hundreds of visitors on weekends in the summer. Um, we were moaned at for calling it Cambridge Lakes. We were moaned at for calling it Cherry Hinton Lakes, um, all for various different reasons. And we so we settled on Burnside. Um, however, uh, moving forward, we are speaking with um, local representatives uh, as well as residents about what they want to call the lakes as they come forward to become the um, urban country park and I, I think that that should be um, where our sort of efforts are um, on making sure that what it's called in future is something that's reflective of local um, opinion. We're, we're certainly alive to the issue of uh, associated with the Burnside reference though so that's that's eminently sensible and we'll, uh, we'll make sure that's taken into account. Okay thank you and so if you could take your presentation down now we'll go um, on to the questions and um, Chris, Chris Carter um, if I could take the first question first. Yes, please. Uh, yes, would, um, would you like me to read it out? Or you... Yeah. So, um, Ruth, it's Claire Daunton here, and it's Daunton, D-A-U-N-T-O-N, -N, uh, not Dawson. Um, and um, if we can have another meeting in the near future, well, I should just explain that um, because of COVID, we missed uh, two meetings last year. Um, so we do realise that we've got a lot to get through in this session and we normally meet every three to four months and we will now be getting back to that schedule, as I mentioned at the beginning, alternating between city leading and South Cam's leading. So we should be uh, meeting more often than we have done in the recent past. Um, over to you now, Chris, Chris Carter. Thank you. Yes. Uh, further point from, from Ruth. Uh, the future of the lakes should be tied up with the future of Snaky Path and of the brook. Um, I've suggested in the, path, in the past that the path needs to be remodelled with perhaps additional land taken from the school uh, to permit a widening. What options are currently in play? Um, I, I believe the, um, uh, the city and county councils are, are taking forward proposals to remodel and look at Snaky Path and um, some widening there. So we, we, we've had discussions uh, with them on that. And, and I understand that they're, um, uh, you know, they've got monies um, set aside and, and they're looking at initiatives to do exactly that. Um, you know, obviously it's land that we, we don't control. Uh, I think there's every chance that we may be asked to, to make some kind of offsite mitigation contribution to it. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I think that that's, that, that's open for discussion. We certainly wouldn't say no if it was a, reasonable and, and, um, and put to us. Thank you. And I mean, in addition to that, we've had uh, meetings before with the Friends of the Cherry Hinton Broom, mm. very conscious of, of their sort of, uh, the, their opinions on, on that part of the, um, that, that part of the area. And for us, I think that the proposals we see to date do respect the Cherry Hinton Brook and the, the special nature of it. 
um, but also in creating that cycle and pedestrian access at the northern part of the lakes parcel, um, in creating that that will effectively take away um, a, a pinch point and a sort of one central access that we see at the moment. So in in that respect, we I, I'd argue that they're you know the the proposals are reflective of those discussions. Okay. And I just add in there that there was a question sent in. Um, by David Brooks that um, on the improvement to Snaky Path and I think you if you've not covered that in your answer you'll be taking that up later on I think from the um, written question. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Yes the next question uh, what is the current situation with the methane from the old refuse tip? Yeah so we, we, we've got um, you know uh, an incredibly extensive amount of monitoring going on and it has been going on for many many years now um, so, uh, you know, the, the gas report will form part of the so very detailed geo-environmental report and monitoring report, form part of the application. Um, it's not actually gassing much at all anymore, just due to its age. So actually, it's, it's really, um, you know, very, very settled and, um, um, you know, gas mitigation measures will be put in place as a matter of course, uh, both during any construction and obviously post-construction as well. Um, but in, in terms of actually what's happening in the ground at the moment, uh, nothing from the monitoring is indicating anything of particular concern. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is, uh, are you able to comment on where the access points will be for the lakes, vehicles and people? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I alluded to it in my last um, answer, but we've, we've tried to shift the emphasis to um, access from the tins. That's the most actively used um, area, or sorry, uh, cycle uh, network. And so we, we want to allow sort of uh, ready access uh, from that area. Um, the car park uh, that exists at the end of Burnside, that will still remain, um, but purely for use by the uh, private fishing club. Um, and obviously access for um, those who need to maintain the, the lakes um, going forward. Uh, so that will be the only uh, vehicular access to site. Okay, thank you. Uh, the remaining comments relate to the, the name, and I think we've covered that already. So, Chair, that's the end of the questions as I see them. Um, thank you. Um, and we had one um, a written question sent in advance from Claire Castle. And if Claire is here um, in the meeting, I think colleagues from the Greater Cambridge Partnership of Transport um, will take that question and get in touch with you, get back to you about that. Um, thank you, Chris.